Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, September 3rd, 2019 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Brussels, Belgium. Xavier came across another malware sample that actually downloads and installs a complete copy of Node.js on Windows systems it infects. Node.js, of course, has become a real popular development platform for all of its libraries and capabilities it's offering. In this case, it's not really clear why the attacker is going through the trouble to download it all. Xavier only took a cursory look at the malware, but it mostly appears to implement a command and control channel. So this may not be a finished product yet, but more kind of a prototype trial balloon of further malware to come. Node.js, of course, is not malware by itself. It's not flagged as such by your antivirus and that may be an attempt to sort of sneak past antivirus and then just load miscellaneous javascript snippets that of course are again also usually not detected or not even analyzed in particular in this case the actual attack javascript that's then implementing this command control channel is uh, actually arriving as a base 64 encoded comment and if you're running your own mail server in a Unix environment, it's very likely that you're using the DoveCot server for IMAP. Well, a remote code execution vulnerability in DoveCut was just patched five days ago. Certainly time to look out for updates for your Unix distribution. The advisory does list a little sort of proof of concept exploit for this vulnerability, but also states that actual remote code execution is quite tricky to accomplish in uh, this particular case. In addition to remote code execution, this vulnerability may also be used uh, to read memory from DoveCut. DoveCut add-on pigeonhole is also affected, uh, but uh, not clear if there's already a patch available for uh, this particular software. So no exploit yet, not likely to see an exploit very soon, but uh, patches should be available for your Unix distribution. Malware authors often use Cloudflare in order to obfuscate the actual origin of a malware and also uh, to bypass some Lock lists. Now, typically, malware authors use Cloudflare's free proxy service in order to accomplish that. But uh, based on a blog post by Marcel Afrahim, the Astroth Trojan actually took this a step further by using Cloudflare's workers feature. Cloudflare workers essentially code that you run within Cloudflare. It's intended to do things like more intelligent load balancing and the like. And the way it works is that you upload JavaScript snippets to Cloudflare and then it's run within Cloudflare to serve requests being sent to specific URLs. This type of serverless computing, of course, is very popular these days. Uh, Amazon, for example, has its Lambda service to do similar things, but Cloudflare does offer a free tier that allows you to run 100,000 workers a day for free. And apparently that's what Astaroth is doing in its latest version in order to make it more difficult to block uh, these requests. For more details, look at Marcel's blog post. He goes into quite a bit of detail in how this is actually accomplished, how sort of random URLs are being generated using this method to make it more difficult to actually come up with any meaningful indicators of compromise. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.